Hello and welcome to a quick Drupal Easy screencast about rebasing two divergent branches using Git where each of the two branches has a change to its composer.json file. So this is often the case when both in this example, the master branch and the feature branch, um, both have made changes to the composer.json, maybe adding a dependency in each branch. So when that's the case, you're always going to end up with a conflict in at least the composer.lock file. So let's go through the process to um, uh, rectify that issue when rebasing, in this case, feature one into the master branch. So the first step is to kick off the rebase. Um, and you can see the head is pointing to the master branch. So we're on master and we uh, issue the git rebase feature one command. And in a rebase, what actually happens is uh, git replays the timeline back to the point where the two branches diverged. And then it takes those two commits off temporarily. And then it starts moving the playback head forward along the feature one branch. And when it gets to the end of the feature one branch, the next step is to start playing back the commits it took took off, uh, in this case, 666 and 777. So when 666 is tried to apply, be applied, we end up with a conflict. Why do we end up with a conflict? Well, because 555 has a change to the composer.lock file, and 666 has a change to the composer.lock file. Um, in each case, the content hash has been modified by the, either the addition or the deletion of the project dependency, and Git cannot figure out which one to use. Well, if you dive into Composer a little bit, you'll learn that neither is correct, that that content hash is basically the result of a mathematical function. So in this particular case, when you have two divergent branches, both with dependency changes, that content hash needs to be recalculated. So how do we go about doing that? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we have to kind of go through our files, um, composer-related files, and take care of our conflicts. So sometimes you might end up with a conflict, conflict in the composer.json file. If so, that's normally very easy to resolve. So go edit that file, resolve it, and then mark it as resolved with a git add composer.json. If you are committing dependencies to the repo, Normally, your vendor slash composer slash install.json file is going to be in conflict as well, um, but you can generally get that out of conflict just by doing a checkout on that file. Um, and then finally, composer.lock is always going to be in conflict in this situation, so we want to do a git checkout of that. But let's talk about ours versus theirs. When you're doing a rebase, ours is always following where head is. So in this case, ours refers to the feature one branch, where theirs would refer to the original master branch. So when you do a git checkout composer.lock dash dash ours, we're actually choosing the version of the composer.lock that was part of the feature one branch. In most cases, it doesn't matter which one you choose. Generally, as a rule of thumb, pick the composer.lock file that has the most changes. So once we check that out, then normally at this point, everything is now out of conflict, um, but our composer.lock is still not up to date because we chose the version that was in the 555 commit, but we need to update it with the changes that are also in the 666 commit. So what we're actually going to do is we're actually just going to regenerate that composer.lock file. So when we do a composer update dash dash lock, that actually takes information from the composer.json, composer.lock, as well as the vendor directory and regenerates that composer.lock file and only the composer.lock file. This command, when you use dash dash lock, will not update any of your dependencies. Once it's done, you can go ahead and add your composer.lock file. And your 666 commit is going to be slightly different. That's why I changed it to a 666.66a commit. It's not exactly the same because it's got a slightly different composer.lock, but for the most part, it's the same. And at this point, we can just continue with our rebase and 
keep on applying the rest of our commits. And they will change slightly the actual date and the commit objects because now the parent is slightly different. But for the most part, they are exactly what, um, well, I shouldn't say exactly, but for the most part, they're very, very similar to what was originally in the master branch. And at this point, you're done. You know, both of your um, uh, branch, you know, or I should say the feature one branch has been merged, has been rebased uh, onto master. And you're good to go moving forward with no commit bubbles and everything is as you would expect it to be. Alrighty, thanks for watching.